I wonder who's gonna tell all of those internet gurus, the real estate people that are predicting market crash after market crash, interest rate catastrophes, that they cost a lot of honest, hardworking people about 7% home equity last year, making them too afraid to buy a house. Trust me. I understand as a loan officer and a content creator how challenging it can be to want to buy a house when interest rates are at 8%. But when the conditions are in your favor, when there is low demand, that's when you take the opportunity to negotiate lower prices, closing costs, repairs. I mean, you can really get a deal when there are fewer people in the marketplace trying to get the home that you want. And now that interest rates are coming down, we are starting to see all of those bidding wars coming back, people getting aggressive on offers. And when that happens, people are willing to waive their appraisal rights, their repair contingencies, inspections. I mean, it's, it's nuts, you guys. And I will tell you that as a content creator, one of the things that pisses me off the most is how people will use your fear to get views. It's not real tactical money advice. They'll give you these market predictions that are based in feelings. And this channel is never going to be about that. For me, it's about teaching people practical money tips. You can make a smart home purchase or a smart money move. And so I get that the channel will never be viral, but gosh, you guys, the window for opportunity to still score a, a deal, it's, it's running out. I mean, I, it's probably days, if not weeks. And so I hope you listen to this video. I hope it's informative. I'm going to be talking about some market predictions for this year and some money strategies that have stood the test of time because I hope that this year will be the year that you take the plunge, that you invest in yourselves and you start growing wealth. All right, guys, Lizzie Hofer. I work for Cross Country Mortgage. I'm a residential loan officer and I teach practical money tips so that you guys can become successful homeowners. If you like today's video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and maybe share it with a friend if you really find it helpful. I want to jump into this video by talking about interest rates. I think it is so important, guys, when you're talking about anything financial, that you follow people that have advice that's rooted in actual data. And don't be afraid to ask follow-up questions. I typically find that these gurus will crumble if you ask them one or two questions about the topic they're, they're preaching on. And what's important is that they have actual data metrics for when they're predicting will come true. Now, none of us are clairvoyant. We're giving you our best advice based on the information that we have, but if it isn't rooted in data, it's a guess. And so I see a lot of realtors and I see a lot of loan officers talking about when and how much they think interest rates are going to go down by. And I think that's really scary territory because we have no guarantees in this. Uh, there are some correlations between when we see historically interest rates come down, but they're not tied together. Like for instance, a good example of this is the election. In historically during election years, we've seen some interest rates go down and that's because election news and commentary has impacts to the stock market. Generally speaking, when the stock market is not performing well, investors will take their money out of the stocks and buy bonds and mortgage-backed securities, which improves rates. Also, historically, when we see lower unemployment numbers, we see improvements in mortgage-backed securities and then lower rates. And so that's a relationship that we have based a lot of commentary and advice on because those market ebbs and flows have been have stood the test of time. Now, as it relates to current rates, here's what I will say. There are only two real economic things that can happen to bring rates down. One is a recession. And two is that the market stabilizes and that investments in mortgage-backed securities become more stable. There is a high likelihood, right, that we will enter into a recession because the Fed has raised the rate at which banks and businesses borrow from the federal government so high that the cost of doing business and lending has really slowed down. They're doing this to slow down inflation to bring down the cost of goods and services. At some point, whenever the Fed typically intervenes like this, we find ourselves in a recessionary period, which means that there isn't a whole lot of spending and the government has to do what's called quantitative easing, which is where they buy assets like mortgage-backed securities to drop mortgage interest rates to stimulate the economy. Real estate impacts about 30% of the overall GDP in terms of all of the different verticals that it impacts. So real estate is definitely a place that we see the Fed buy to stimulate spending. I think that there's a good likelihood of that. Now, the second is just that the economy stabilizes itself. So there is some talk that, hey, we're gonna have what's called a soft landing. I don't know if you've heard this in the news, which means that they've done all of the measurements possible 
so that inflation is slowing down and slowed enough that there isn't going to be this huge wave in unemployment, that there isn't going to be this huge wave in businesses going down, and that we will start seeing a slow subset, right? So we'll start seeing the economy kind of stabilize and settle. If that were to happen, it's hard to say when interest rates will stabilize, but usually what happens is that investors want to see pretty significant long-term yields, right, that are comparable with bonds. And the reason that you know right now there's very little appetite is because you've heard maybe in the news is about the inverted yield curve, which is where shorter term bonds are actually pay better and higher interest than longer term bonds. And that is because the market investors believe that if they put their money in shorter term bonds, they're likely to be able to reinvest sooner versus putting them in longer term bonds with lower yields when yields will be higher, maybe in the next, you know, 18 to 24 months. Those are the two, like only for sure ways that we will know that interest rates will drop. One's long term, we're talking 18 to 24 months, in my opinion. And then the other one could could be as soon as the second quarter based on some of you know some of the economic reports I read now I am not clairvoyant at all I'm not telling you that you should buy a home you know and then pray that interest rates go down what I am saying is that if you can safely afford to buy a home when interest rates are high you have stronger negotiation leverage so what people didn't really grasp was the concept of supply and demand. It is true that interest rates were super high and it is true that demand significantly declined when interest rates rose. But what wasn't really being talked a lot about was the fact that the number of houses that were available for sale was very, very limited and limited even before right interest rates got so high. We have been in this position where we have underbuilt for a really long time, mostly because of the Great Recession, and it never kept up with population growth and family creation. And so we were always had a disproportionate number of houses to the number of people that need them. And right now people are willing to live together, um, and that is really wonderful, but eventually that will change as the population grows. And because of that, even though we still had a significant decline in the number of people that wanted houses, the real estate market stayed very consistent because the number of people that still needed them met the demand. When interest rates go down, I mean, and the, the data on this is like, all over the place, just so you guys know. There's anywhere between six to eight million buyers that will emerge into the market. I've read that there is, you know, for every 1%, there's, you know, 5 million. Um, I've read other reports that say for every 1%, there's 1 million, which I think is actually more consistent with what we've seen in data. Interest rates rose from like the fours to the eights. So you're losing about a million people per interest rate. And then you lose about a half a million people that just kind of sit on the sidelines because they're scared. That's why that number varies so much. But assuming that all those people are now eligible and half of them are interested, we still we now have like double or triple the amount of people that are interested in buying the same house that you wanted to buy. So even though interest rates maybe come down a half a percent, come down a full percent, the amount of that you would pay for that same property in six months to a year from now is gonna be significantly higher and the conditions are gonna be significantly more challenging than they were when you had fewer competition. And so that was why I kept saying it was important to buy when your budget says it's ready because you start that equity journey sooner and you get to lock in that price. And so should interest rates come down, you take the advantage of getting the better price, the lower closing costs. People pay less in repairs, less in actual closing costs. I mean, you can even get people to do upgrades, pay for buy downs. I mean, there's so many things you could have negotiated last year that might not be available this year. And so the, just the overall out-of-pocket expense, it, like, I think the break-even is around four years when you compare it to markets like 2020 and 2021 when interest rates are so low. Now, should you buy in 2024? Now, I'm gonna give you some data points and then I'm gonna talk to you about tried and true methods for understanding investments. According to NAR, the median home sales price went up by 4% last year. Now, that is really dependent on the market. So there's some areas that actually were flat that didn't appreciate at all. Some markets were close to 8%. Uh, here in Arizona, I think we're close to 7%. So depending on your area, this will have impacted you differently. But let's assume it's 4% and you put down 3% or 5% as a down payment. You have either achieved 100% return on your down payment or you are close to 100% return in one year on your cash investment. And so what's interesting about that is that if you applied that same methodology to a stock or to a bond or to Bitcoin, you would think that was an awesome investment, right? Anytime you can get almost 100% return on your money in such a short period, 
that's amazing. Now, real estate, you leverage the total value of your home. That's what it appreciates against versus your cash outlay, which is why the returns are so strong. Then the second thing you have to consider about the data that's available today is that we currently have a 3.5 month, so three and a half months supply of properties. Now this is a nationwide stat, and that is technically a seller's market. A seller's market is somewhere between, you know, four to six months, depending on your area. Because we are under that marker, right? When it becomes a seller's market, you typically don't have as much leverage in negotiation power. Now we're still kind of on the higher end of what could potentially be a buyer's market. So I'm sure in some areas you can still get some really great negotiations, but as that number goes down, as the number of homes available on the market declines, we will see market conditions be a lot more aggressive. And then last but not least guys, interest rates have dropped pretty significantly since the peak in October when they were at 8%. There's a really great website called Mortgage News Daily that you can check where the average of interest rates lie. They do this really great survey amongst a bunch of national lenders and there aren't a whole lot of advertisements. So you're seeing a really good idea of where rates lie, but they have gone down pretty significantly. And with every decline of 1%, it typically opens up anywhere between 10 to 30% in someone's buying power, depending on their scenario. I think that the best time to purchase is when your budget says it is ready, which means that you can safely pay debt and safely save for the future within your monthly spending and it doesn't compromise either one of those things. If you find that you are living paycheck to paycheck because of a home purchase, you may want to reconsider or you may want to reconsider the strategy. So a couple things if you can't, if you don't feel like you can afford to buy a home. One, can you do a generational house? Lots of homes, especially in Phoenix, which are now allowing for, you know, another dwelling to be added on to the back of our homes can be generational housing where, where you purchase a house with maybe your siblings or you purchase a house with your parents and you guys split the residence or somebody lives in the guest house or somebody lives in an accessory dwelling. But that is one consideration to be able to afford a house with your family. Another one is going in in partnership with a friend. I see lots of people buy homes with their boyfriend, their girlfriend, their best friends, their roommates, and they make that first investment together I know that, you know, back in 2006, I wasn't totally ready to purchase a house on my own. I partnered with my brother to make my first investment. So you'll want to look into that. Just make sure that you have a good plan for the property. If, if somebody changes their mind, if somebody wants to buy out the other one, how long do you plan on owning this together? Make sure that all of those details are outlined so it doesn't cause you any kind of conflict. So let's wrap this up. It's so important guys, if you get nothing else from this video to make sure that you are listening to the advice of experts and people that really can back up what they're saying in rooted facts. No one's clairvoyant. They can't tell you an exact figure or guarantee when or how much, but people who are really educated in what they're preaching about will give you the best tactical advice and give you the best evidence for what supports their reasoning. Just so you guys know, the internet is very varied on this. The experts that I follow are suggesting that the earliest that we will see a meaningful decline in interest rates is around second quarter when we've had two consecutive months of lower GDP and they feel that we are likely in a recession. I pay attention to employment reports, inflation data, and uh, GDP all the time because for me, those are the things that can change the direction of rates. So if you're interested in learning more about that, please sign up for my newsletter and follow my Instagram because I give lots of different market tips there. Two guys, if you buy when your budget says it's ready, you will always make a smart investment and time in the market outpays timing the market anytime. Last year was considered one of the worst years to buy because of seven to 8% rates and people made a lot of money on their investments and are going to continue to have that investment appreciate the longer they own that property. So just remember markets ebb and flow, no investment is guaranteed, but housing at least gives you the utility of use. So you can live in the property while it earns equity. So last but not least guys, understand what you want your money to do for you. Do you want to make investments that cash flow? Do you want to make investments that appreciate? Do you want to make investments because you believe in a company and you understand what its profits are doing and how long you plan on owning it? Understanding a good financial buy box for your money is what's going to help you make informed decisions and help you go against the grain when everyone else decides that it's not a good time to buy. Always remember that supply and demand really work in any kind of economy, in any kind of environment with any kind of investment. And so the laws of supply and demand were very evident last year. It didn't seem to make a dent in the number of you know, consumers' opinions, 
but I hope that you hold this true. I hope you Google those concepts. And if you have any questions, guys, at all on anything I talked about today, go ahead and leave the comments below. I'm happy to help you guys. And let's make 2024 a great year for our money and real estate.